I had butterflies in my stomach as I climbed up the stepladder and lowered myself down into the Clelia's hatch. A sub crewman on top shut the hatch and sealed it tight. Then a big hydraulic crane hoisted us off the deck of the Seward Johnson II and into the warm waters of the Gulf Stream. Got a seal. Yeah. As the shimmering surface closed above us, geologist Leslie Sauter, pilot Tim Askew Jr. and I began our trip to uncharted parts of the seafloor. That was a great view. Soon after we settled on the bottom and began crawling across the ocean floor, Leslie spotted a strange looking fish resting beside a rock. As the cloud of sediments cleared, we realized it was an aptly named toadfish, not yet aware of our presence. Tim moved one of the Clelia's arms out to stun the toadfish with a dose of fish anesthetic called rotenone. Oh, there he goes. Get yeah. him! Get him! Oh, he's big. Yeah. We wouldn't have got him. No, anyway. I don't think so. <laughs> no. <laughs> wow. Leslie and Tim also captured a sample of cubbyu, the little black fish swirling around the rocks and crevices, by shooting clouds of rotenone at the fish and then sucking them up with Aclelia's underwater vacuum cleaner. Then more sea creatures came into view, including a brown ray and an octopus hiding behind a rock. Nobody's ever been down here before, and so we, we can imagine what it was going to be like based on other technology, but to actually see it is so much more important. After close to three hours moving around on the bottom, it was time to float back up to the surface 200 feet above. A swimmer jumped in the water to attach a line to the Clelia, and we were lifted back onto the deck of the Seward Johnson II. Our underwater mission may have come to an end, but scientists will continue to study the pictures and samples Leslie and Tim collected.